Well, hello, lovely listeners. Um, it gives me a great honor to introduce Eva Pelikova. Yeah? Yes. Oh. <laughs> I, always, I always look for the thumbs up there, I've got it right. Um, Eva is known as a mompreneur, and um, she went from food stamps to a seven figure business with a small child in 18 months as a single mother and mm -hmm. wow I'm just gonna tip my hat right now because um as a single mom myself many years mm. ago yeah I know how difficult that is um Eva took her coaching business from barely making any money to a lot of money within 18 months whilst being mm -hmm. pregnant multitasking um mm -hmm. single parent she's now a business and mindset coach who helps high performing multi six and seven fig figure business owners break free of their own barriers um and hopefully fall madly in love with their own business she's also mm -hmm. the number one best-selling mm -hmm. author and an award-winning international speaker um eva's biggest joy or sorry biggest accomplishment and joy is helping clients achieve amazing financial growth within a small matter of months mm. and Eva is keen to also talk about what happened to her after she made all of that money um, and the um, well I don't know what came next I'm intrigued to know what came next so, <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so yes. much Eva it's an absolute privilege to have you thank you so 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 much for having me I'm so excited to have this conversation and you're in Costa Rica and looking a lot mm -hmm. a lot warmer than I am so is it nice <laughs> right now <laughs> Yes, yes, it's beautiful here. Finally, we're out, almost out of the rain season, so it's really nice. Cool. I'll be int intrigued to know um, why you moved there as well. So um, how I always start, um, really, for the listeners is for them to understand more about Eva, you know, what, mm -hmm. obviously, you know, you weren't making hardly any money, and then you went to this massive amount of money, and you were pregnant and a single mom and all of that, and for me, you know, I, I struggled a lot as a single mom, you know, I was a go-getter working hard and doing loads of things in my spare time to try and replace mm -hmm. the rat race. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm always mm -hmm. inspired when I have somebody sat in front of me that's done what I really, really wanted to do all those years ago. So over to you, Eva, I'd love to hear more about you. Thank you so much. I'm happy to share. So I'm just going to be totally honest. And I think, I think if you have any single mom listeners, they might relate to this, but um, I started my business coaching practice in 2018 and um, the way, you know, and now it's more mindset than business coaching, quite honestly, but back then I wanted to do it all offline. I was driving around, I was living in the US at the time, and I was driving around doing lots of speaking, you know, lots of leading workshops, and I would show up to like, this is like little female entrepreneur organizations, and I would show up and I would do a, do a speaking gig, and I would uh, invite people to talk to me, and they would, and would sign clients, right? And it was like, that was 2019 that I will tell you, it was like, for me, it was a dream come true because I love traveling. And I actually, I was living in Boulder, Colorado, which is like a beautiful place, but I also got an RV and I was like, I'm going to go all over and I'm going to speak, you know, in the North during the summer and the South during the winter. So I like mapped out all these organizations. I reached out, I booked all the speaking gigs. It was like, it was just one of those, like for me, that was perfect, you know, and I, and I got to. Quick, quick question, quick question. Yeah. So you said 2018. Mm -hmm. and what were you doing prior to that? And how did you all of a sudden have all these speaking gigs? Oh, it's, it's you know, could talk for hours. But I was actually before that I was running a restaurant uh, of all things. But that I didn't really. Oh, my gosh. Don't go into brick and mortar if you're going to open a business. I'll tell you that much about that. So I decided to sell it. And I decided to that I wanted to start working on the life of, of freedom. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of why I decided to do it. And, you know, I've always been resourceful and I got a bunch of connections and started setting these up and, you know, it was, it was little by little, you know, I wasn't doing like super crazy. Well, it was like five, 10 K months and whatnot, you know, but it was enough. It was a lot of gas money <laughs> while this driving with an RV around, but it was enough. And for me, it was a little bit of a dream come true, you know, be able to go pop into a speaking engagement 
just me and my laptop and my phone and my hotspot and go meditate in this national park and that national park and do the hiking and, and read the books. And it was just like, it was freedom. You know, after five years of being tied up in the restaurant business, I'm like, oh my gosh, nothing is breaking down. It's all great. And then I met somebody, <laughs> I, I met somebody, you know, and I was like, oh my God, like, there's a guy with me. We're going to travel together. And we, <laughs> we actually began to coach together. We're doing uh, some spiritual coaching in the site together. And we were, uh, we were doing, uh, we were doing some spiritual practice together, writing, uh, working on a book together. And I was like, Oh my gosh, how does this get better than that? You know, it was like, it was just amazing. You know, I would still do my business stuff in town do my speaking he's like oh my god you know he's like waiting for me it's this awesome thing and then uh july 1st 2019 i found out i was pregnant and july 5th 2019 was the last time i ever saw him and uh that was it wow. and you know he realized hey you know doesn't really want to be a father again and uh ended up blocking me on all social media all that stuff and um and uh, what followed was a complete breakdown of my business, total depression. Um, I had to cancel about 30 speaking engagements for the rest of 2019, realizing, uh, you know, number one, I could not even drive. I was so sick and so nauseous, no energy. I'm like, I cannot do this. Plus, it's not the life that I can have as a single mother. I can't be driving around like a maniac. It's like, no, like, and I like I knew nothing about kids. I was I was like happy, right? I was happy because I always wanted a baby, and sometimes like, or I'd already like given up. <laughs> I was kind of at the phase like, ah, it's never happened. It's probably never gonna, gonna happen. Wow. And and but and and it did, you know. And it was this like, okay, you know, it was the the first trimester. I think was the de- the darkest darkest period of my life. Just abandonment. The first thing that was like, okay, who's the kind of person who gets left after four days of pregnancy? Yeah. (laughs) That's hard. You see? Yeah. 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 So it was shame. There was self-doubt. There was denial. There was, uh, I couldn't even make it to grief. I just couldn't even be sad. I was just like sitting on a couch and staring. That's all I could do. I would get up and go to bathroom and puke. That was about the extent of my activity, right? And then, you know, I started kind of waking up from it. And I was like, oh my God, I need to figure out how to make money and I can't travel. Now what, right? So then I was in this phase of, okay, I'm going to try to build this business online. What followed was um, just lots of, crazy amounts of doing and building courses and memberships and um, just feeling really lost too. Like, what am I supposed to be doing with my business? And kind of like faking clarity, you know, it's like getting myself motivated and inspired, but really, really faking a lot of that clarity. Right. And I was having a lot of conversation with myself in my head about what my purpose is. And I was very, very, very emotional you know, lots of emotional roller coaster, lots of guilt and blame and victimhood. And, and in retrospect, I realized it was, it was, it was the symptom of the human condition that I call being lost, which I think we all have to an extent. And the beautiful thing, and, you know, I'm going to say something really, really controversial, but, um, but number one, I think this is actually a good thing. We, we chose this right? We chose to come here and get lost and forget. And we have spiritual amnesia. We lost most of our divine connection. We can't remember any of our, any of our past life stuff. We know nothing. We're completely waiting in the dark. I'm like, what am I doing here? What's my purpose? What am I supposed to be doing here? We're so confused and we're faking not being confused. And we're trying to figure our way out of this confusion, right? And I'm going to say one thing that I think is, is another super controversial thing. I think when you hit a rock bottom, it's actually a really good thing. Yeah, I agree. It's actually a really good thing because you throw your hands up in the air and you say, I don't know. And I'm lost and I cannot figure my way, my way out of it. Right. And this, it's, it's just so beautiful because this is all, um, it's, it's all on purpose. You know, it's by design. We chose to do this. We chose to go through this process of like, 
all right, I'm going to get lost. I'm going to forget everything. And then I'm going to hopefully find my way back home. Right. And so this whole thing of building business has been like, yes, some business stuff. A lot of it has been finding myself and letting go of the things that were so completely inauthentic, so completely divorced from reality. And if I hadn't gone through that, I would never be able to do that. And there was a lot of reprogramming of mindset and a lot of like realizing my own limitations. And it's like, you know, there came a point where I was like this close to getting a day job because Mm -hmm. I was down to, you know, I've spent all this money on membership courses and all the stuff that never works anyway. Right. And I had about 700 bucks in my bank account and I was this close to getting a job. It was like a little bit of a wake up moment for me when I said, okay, what if I can figure this out? Like, you know, what if I can, what if, what if I can build a life that is full of joy, that is full of abundance. I can live wherever I want. I can have the adventures, even with a baby as a single mother, abundance of time, money, resources, amazing clients, business that I love that is completely in, in alignment and it has not been a straight and narrow path by any no. means. Never is. It's right. It's been like, you know, a, a lot, but it's been the most amazing, amazing journey that I can imagine. Right. So, so you were, for want of a better phrase on your ass, you know, he, he'd gone, you were in the depths of despair mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. um thinking god knows what um Mm -hmm. and then almost getting a job and then a bit of an epiphany (laughs) yeah Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. a bit of an epiphany you know Mm -hmm. talking to yourself I hang on a minute I know I can do this so so Mm -hmm. what what period was that because he left on the 5th of July I think it was four days yeah 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 yeah. this is about this is about I think October when I hit 700 bucks on my account Yeah. and November was when I kind of started, you know, around that time frame when I started waking up, you know, and saying, you know, okay, just opening and, and coming out of the victimhood and just getting into a weight, you know, just getting into like a little bit more trust and doing so, so, so much work on myself and, and really starting to design the life that I wanted and starting to believe. And it's sometimes like, that's impossible. You've seen so much failure and so much struggle and telling yourself, you know what, like I can, and I will. And, you know, at the beginning, it can be a little bit tough because you almost have to be like military with yourself, like mindset. I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to go down to the depths of despair. You know, at the beginning, it was all like gratitude, 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 gratitude. But then it started being a little bit different. And then I realized, you know, this like mindset wise, like all these tools that we use to make ourselves feel better tend to be a band-aid. Like we've all done so much work. We have all done the workshops and the practices and the yoga and the breath work and the psychedelics and, 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 you know, the landmark and like, name it. Like we have all done it all, (laughs) like done it all. Right. Like (laughs) say like literally done it all. Right. And how long it it all worked for about two hours. (laughs) Well, it might've been a bit longer than that, but yeah, you're right. Okay. Okay. Maybe four, (laughs) (laughs) but yeah. But it all works for a period of time. But we have spent a lifetime of trying to make ourselves feel better. You know, and when that's really kind of the opposite of what we need to be doing. So then I realized that this, to to go up in consciousness, it's not about uh, doing all this mindset work, trying to think better, be better, do better, do more, be more, be more perfect version of yourself through the hard stuff and allowing yourself feel everything that you have repressed your entire life right and when we do that do we start realign with ourselves right so I started actually allowing myself to feel 
yeah. which is the opposite of what I was doing my whole life. Yeah. And allowing to bring up the, the stuff that I was resisting, you know, and, and then I got a bunch of downloads and one of them is this, I think we have eight or nine layers that we sort of have to like burn through and we have to dissolve that are sort of, you know, like the protective layers, like we're walking in a box yeah. and it's not mental. It's all emotional. It's like, there's these emotional boxes and it feels like you're walking like a robot right because you're so self-protective and in business this is so important this is so uh, why I'm so passionate about working with entrepreneurs because business shows you exactly what those layers are that you haven't worked through because if you don't you can't build your business you can't move your business forward right so they all come up Every single one of them gets confronted in your business. Where are they? Number one, the need for security and safety, mm. right? It's like you start your business. What do you have to do? You have to invest, right? You have to invest. You have to, you know, pay a VA, hire a coach, invest into whatever system do you need to do. But that confronts like everything, you know, yeah. and there's so much want and need for security, right? The second thing that shows up, you need to show up on camera. You need to, you need to share your story. And there's with this like wanting to be liked and admired and respected and acknowledged and validated. It's like subtle, but it's there all the time, mm. right? And, you know, at the beginning, people have this, the, all these visibility issues that they just can't show up and share their story or they're like in the closet about their business. They won't go on their Facebook page and tell everybody, you know, I, you know I'm, I'm doing ABC, XYZ because they're like, oh my God, what do people think? Like, what is she doing now? I'm such a fraud. Like, am I certified, qualified doing this enough, right? Yeah. That's what it looks like at the beginning. In the later stages, when you're dealing with a lot of clients, not everybody's happy with you at all times, right? There, everybody's going to have opinions about what you're doing. And they're gonna be very strong opinions. And if you're running your life from who likes me and who doesn't like me, you're set up for disaster. Mm. So now we need to process this out of our systems, start letting go of this, right? There's this need for control, for certainty that comes in. Like we wanna feel like we're on track. We're really good at controlling through like doing and checking the boxes. Yeah. But that the world doesn't do what we need it to do, right? What we want it to do. It doesn't work that way. So that gets going for an business, you know. This year, everybody's Facebook ad costs went through the roof. Legion is work, like everything that everybody's doing. Businesses are, you know, people are going out of business left and right. And there is this panic and there's this resistance, what is, right? And it's like, that's all good. It's like confronting this basic thing that we need to let go of right? This really need for control and need for certainty and need for security and all these things, right? So anyway, it's just, it's just some of those, right? And oh, and there's one more. I think here's what happens, right? So, so you come here and you divorce from your soul. It gets split. And there is this, you, and there's, there's, there's a little bit of this lostness and confusion and void that's going on. And we're trying to do whatever we can to fill that space. We're trying to make ourselves feel better. Some people are doing it through drugs and alcohol. Other people are doing it through going to gym every day, right? But there's still this need to make ourselves feel better with something from the outside. Right. And there lies the biggest danger of building a business and why so many businesses fail. Because one of the ways we feel this is um, I'm going to feel better if I'm just like somebody else, if I follow somebody else's ideas, if I follow what society is telling me to do what my coach is telling me to do. Nothing wrong with coaches. I'm one of them, right? We put other people a pedestal. We go into comparisonitis. What is everybody else doing? I'm just going to copy what they're doing. That is going to work. If I'm just like that, if I'm a better version of myself, I'm going to feel better. And 
that ends up divorcing us even more from our um, from our true self, right? So I've, I've literally been having this conversation with a friend today. Um, mm, that's because, so good. Yeah, because you know I'm I'm a coach, um, a new you know new coach. He's the same, and he's very um, of the Buddhist Zen way, and and all the others, and landmark, and and everything else that we've all done. Mm -hmm. And uh, we exactly had that conversation today. It is literally mm -hmm. like we are having the same conversation that I had a few hours mm -hmm. ago because I was saying exactly the same thing. I was saying, mm -hmm. I think I've got to a point where it's it's not working, right? I'm not, whatever mm -hmm. I'm doing, it's not working. And, mm -hmm. and I literally said on, in the conversation, I don't know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And he just said, that's really powerful for you to even, mm -hmm. even acknowledge that. Yes. hundred <laughs> percent. hundred percent. I just did this exercise with my clients and I'm like, you, the first step to getting yourself out of this is tell the truth. Yeah. You know, in the world that is built on pretending and faking, when you say, Hey, I'm lost. I don't know what my, my next step is. I've been trying to do just about anything and I'm still lost and I'm confused. You tell the truth. And that's the first step. Is it's really beautiful and really powerful. Okay. So just to take a little back step um, for the for the pleasure of the visitor of the listeners. <laughs> what you so you spent a lot of money on memberships and blah, 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 blah. And yeah. but you still went from not much money to a lot of money in 18 months so mm -hmm. how did that change so if you were spending money on stuff that wasn't working for you what did work in the end mm. <laughs> yeah I'll tell you what um it's none of the flashy tools that you think people and this is another of the of the things that are contributing to the lostness and the confusioning that is out there in the market we're always throwing the next spaghetti on the wall to see what sticks when people have been building businesses for thousands and thousands of years doing the same things it's all about showing up building relationships talking to people closing sales and it worked on the offline world. You know, I would go to workshop and I would deliver, I would talk to people after, get them on my console calendar, talk to them. That was it. You know, the same thing, the same exact thing works online. People online are still people. Yeah. They might be in a computer, but they're still people. And every time you think that you're going to, uh, you're going to outsmart it with automation and passive income and whatever. Uh, it doesn't work. And here's why. The universe wants you to find your way home. It wants you to, to wake up and find your, you know, find, your, get yourself out of this lostness, right? And the way it works is you go to what's emotionally uncomfortable and difficult and you start dissolving these emotions. So there's two ways to try to grow your business. One that is with all these memberships and courses and whatever, that is the way of hiding. It never works. It's never going to grow you. And as a person you know, that has no, um, that has very little emotional safety and capacity to handle a lot of volume of clients, you're never going to get the volume of clients. Does that make sense? Mm. So people are avoiding, people are doing anything they can to avoid the human touch, to avoid being on camera, avoid being uncomfortable and vulnerable and all these things. And so they're going after the, the, the hiding methods, right? Technology and sequences and funnels and whatnot, right? Works for about two people in the industry, right? Then there is this other way of actually expanding your capacity, right? Your, your safety, your sense of safety, right? That, that we talked about earlier, you know, the, the, uh, the expanding your um, comfort with being liked, disliked, whatever, right? Um, letting go of a lot of the control stuff, letting go of making things and other people special and realigning with yourself and then showing up right 
And that is a scary, scary path, but it grows you. It grows you like crazy, having to show up, having to teach on camera or be on a podcast, right? Um, it grows you very, very quickly, right? So I started doing online events. I started doing, it doesn't even matter like the exact tactics, you know? I started doing um, retreats on Zoom, like, hey, here's a free retreat. I'm going to like come hang out with me for a week. We're going to do some work together. And then we're going to talk about whether we should work together or not. Right. And I started inviting people into my group program and they started joining. And, you know, at the beginning, it was kind of a flop because I didn't know what I was doing. You know, I was a little bit nervous on camera. I've never even gone live on Facebook, you know, up until like November 2019. So I was like, oh my God, what am I doing here? You know, but, uh, but what I did was I was, I was very willing to be uncomfortable and vulnerable and go there emotionally and dissolve and feel everything that was coming up and dissolve each of these situations. And also there's something that I practice with my clients all the time, dissolving my resistance to these uncomfortable situations. Because I think that's one of the biggest things in entrepreneurship is resistance. It shows up as a million different things. We don't always spot it, but there's always some excuse well, you should go into hiding and do all these other things rather than doing what you know in your heart of hearts you're supposed to be doing. So I think the path of any entrepreneur, it takes extreme courage, which is why so few people make it. I think like 3% of people make it to seven figures. It's not for the lack of tactics and strategies and whatever, because we all, it's very simple. <laughs> it's, it's so simple. It's like stupidly simple. You know, it's like, um, it, it's so simple. Like, you know, if you t charge 10 K for your program, it's hundred real relationships to get to seven figures. It's not crazy complicated, right? It's, it's really not right. But we get so confused and so sidetracked and we overcomplicate it. And when we actually go like, I'm going to walk the straight line and I'm not, when I feel the resistance and the fear come up, I'm not going to go, let me take a sidetrack here and go on a loop and create a bunch of content and hide on Canva and create a bunch of banners. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to sit and dissolve the resistance, which is a skill that I think everybody should know how to do. Like go and feel until, until it's not there, you know, and you go through it and then you hit the next one and the next one. And it's a lot easier, you know, there's so much talking about this, like, how things should be more in the flow and less masculine and pushy, right? And it's like, it's like, this is the answer. It's, it's being able to move through the resistance. There's a straight line that is a lot easier. You know, it doesn't require working 80 hour weeks, but it's emotionally very uncomfortable, right? So that's my take on this. Quick question. Um, yeah. So let, let's, let's imagine a typical day where, the resistance is high um well before we get to that you were running a restaurant business realized it wasn't what you wanted to do where did the coaching all of a sudden come from you've gone from restaurant to coach and mm -hmm. and do you every day feel like yes this is exactly my purpose and exactly what I should be doing or do you have days where you're like, God, it's really hard for me to do what I've got to do to make sure that I can bring in some new clients and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So, so I will tell you truthfully, like alignment is a work in progress. There is, once you start doing a lot of the inner work, you will realize just how many ways we're, we're misaligned and it's a constant process. And um, I made it to seven figures. We actually had our first $560,000 month in January, 2021. No, February, March. I don't know. One of those months. Okay. And, and I realized after that, I hit a little bit of the, the symptoms of being lost. Mm -hmm. Like this, like, oh my God, it's so heavy and burdened. I don't want to deal with this. Like pressure, you know, when you're feeling a lot of the burden and pressure, and I realized that I was, I was misaligned, right? And I had to make some changes and I had to start transitioning like more towards what I believe. Like I was looking, I was doing a lot of business coaching, but then I realized, you know, this is not the answer. 
I can give you all the tools and the tactics and it doesn't matter, you know, people, people are still not doing it anyway. And you realize, well, this is it. Like what's happening here, the waking up, that's my purpose for me and for everybody else. I don't have it all figured out. You know, there's, there's days that are absolutely, there's, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm, I'm more emotional than anybody almost <laughs> like, you know, and that's part of it. The, you know, our willingness to feel all the feelings, you can get the highs without the lows. Right. But, uh, but I realized like, this is my purpose for people to love themselves more, to accept exactly where they are, to start telling the truth, to start releasing all these emotions that have been repressing their entire life and to get freedom. And the freedom, the way I was teaching it before was financial and location. Are you going to live in Costa Rica? It's going to be great. Have a life like me, you know? It's this like seven figure freedom. And then I was like, no, 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 no. It's not about that because I made it to seven figure. What that, was I free now? I had, I had all the money that I needed. You know, I was in a beautiful country at a full-time nanny and just beautiful life with my daughter twice a day on the beach. But, but this wasn't free. My head wasn't free, you know? So then I realized it's not about that. Like, it's not about that. What I'm, what I'm meant to be teaching is the inner freedom. So, you know, it's, it's like a constant, a constant realignment. So, you know, it's like, it's not like you're going to get there. And, and yeah, I think there's always more work to do. Well, I know that there's that great saying, another level, another devil. Um, yes. Can you give, can you give us a little hint as to, I, I, I don't know if you know, Guy and Alain Ferdman, do they ring a bell to you? No. Yeah. Um, they are very much into the energy and and sitting with you know if you're if you if you've had a complete breakdown oh wait wait, wait. guy and any like who elan uh, thirdman uh it sounds really familiar i think i know exactly who you're talking about okay yeah so it's all about you know feeling where that energy is in your, mm-hmm. your system mm-hmm. and then allowing it to 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 dissipate mm-hmm. however long that's going to bloody take um mm-hmm but also being okay with, with how you're feeling. It's, it's about safety, it's about security, it's about feet. Mm-hmm. We all want to feel safe, right? And we all want mm-hmm. to feel secure. The uh, mm-hmm. co- conversation I was having earlier was we all just want to be mm-hmm. happy. We all just want to be happy, right? And that's what everybody's striving for. Even the psychopaths in this world are, mm-hmm. are striving towards what their happiness is, what they think mm-hmm. their happiness looks like. Um, mm-hmm. And it's, it's, a, it's about, you know, being okay it's about feeling more like you said we've all spent our lives repressing the feelings Mm -hmm. we don't don't want them um and of course antidepressants and stuff like that don't make that any easier do they because it just numbs people so it's about allowing yourself to feel whether it's a headache or whether it's out and out depression and being okay with that and and loving yourself anyway and and it will pass you know it always mm-hmm. passes emotions and feelings that they're, they're not stagnant mm-hmm. but so so and it sounds simple mm-hmm. but of course it isn't you know when you're in the mm-hmm. thick, in the thick of it or you've had some life event thrown at you or, or whatever it might be mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. just give us a hint of how you sort of allow your clients to feel that this is possible this inner work whatever this bloody inner work is you know I can just hear some people going what inner work how do I do this inner work you know so what what does it look like or feel like or sound like (laughs) yeah you know it's like we have these conversations all the time and we just did a client retreat before we went on that went on a break and we literally broke it down layer by layer And it's like, you have to, you know, you have to start with obviously a lot of awareness. Where do you feel like you're wanting a sense of safety? Where do you feel like you're craving acknowledgement and validation and respect and admiration or resisting somebody else not liking you, right? So there's that, like, we have to be present. We have to notice, you know, where do you give power away to things outside of you? What does it feel like to want to give that power away? And then we go through an emotional release. It's it's a little bit more than just like feeling what it's in the body. It's like allowing of it, not just the energy, but it's the emotion. I think there's a difference between energetics and emotional stuff, right? 
and and actually like bring it as much of it as it's there and then going diving right into the middle of the emotion which i think is very very powerful and usually like something snaps something something kind of you know um something clicks and they're like oh my god the biggest insight comes things that they never have been able to see and then you know that's one step closer to freedom you know we do some crazy crazy stuff that i you know that is like very unorthodox but sometimes we do some really really searching like yesterday we did an exercise where you know there's there's these topics that we do not want to think about we do not want to talk about and everybody's just listening listening to this podcast you probably have a few but there's like things like do not mention don't want to think about it maybe I don't like my clients or I don't like a couple of my clients there's somebody who sent me an, an email and they're really unhappy and I don't want to stick my nose in there I don't want to deal with it it's so uncomfortable right or maybe I don't want to think about how much resistance I have around around being around my child sometimes it's a lot of like mother's guilt and there's all these things like we do not want to think about it but what they're doing they're like pulling on us you know they're they're sort of like managing you from the background and you know it's literally like going there into into the the difficult stuff right like going and running into it, like not walking around circles, but just go, go to what's hard, like what's emotionally difficult on any given day and build your life and be able to pause for a few minutes and like feel whatever this situation, this topic is bringing up and then dissolve it. When you do that, you're going to feel so much better and things, you know, you're going to have insights and you're going to start connecting more and more to your soul and part of it is also um having a lot of self-acceptance and self-forgiveness in the process because one thing i have learned over the past year is that um you know my my purpose in life is very simple to be unconditionally loving to all you know, and that is not an easy thing, but I think that's why we all here, we all came here to learn how to love and all this, like, you know, doing more and better and accumulation, all this stuff, it's all fun, but that's not it. That's a distraction, you know? And, um, I was looking at this and, and what I realized is that to be loving to others means you have to love every part of you every part that you find, um, you know, a little bit um, unlovable. Sometimes the parts that we're even disgusted by as we started doing, doing this work, right? The parts of us we don't like about ourselves and we have to accept it and forgive ourselves. And when we do that, we start project, we stop projecting our stuff out on other people. And then we start having a lot more openness and we have a lot more compassion. We have a lot of love, but that is the path, right? Like we start, okay, what is it that I'm not willing to accept about me? And we do accept and we forgive ourselves. And it just starts this heart opening process that is really, really beautiful. Wow. Yeah, that does sound... um... Yeah, it sounds amazing. I've been having lots of thoughts while I'm listening to you, you know, in terms of you talk about the unauthentic, not or not unauthentic, the um, what's the word? You're doing things that are not conventional, sorry. Uh, mm-hmm. And you, you've got these methods that I guess are working for you and for those clients. Mm-hmm. And it's just making me think because I, I know I've been so caught up in, you know, am I doing it right? Um, yes I'm accredited as a coach but what does that really mean uh, you know are people, <laughs> are people really going to see me as an expert are people really going to resonate but you said mm-hmm. something earlier and and, it, and I just thought wow yeah it, it's it is as simple as that it is as simple as conversations connections and mm-hmm. people and people wanting to work with you regardless mm-hmm. regardless of what letters you've got after your name or what accreditations you may or may not have you know Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah so so you went from bricks and mortar to to this lifestyle and obviously it was the freedom that was pushing you at that time um 
And then in terms of getting into coaching, did you go through accreditations or was it no. just something that came? I am not qualified whatsoever to be doing any of what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> Long story short, you know, it, yeah. it's, it's, it's like, it, you know, and, and as long as we, here's the thing. Um, as long as you're not flat about that, people are going to come and ask you like, you're not like, what, like, this is like, you shouldn't be, you know, and, and they will make those comments when they want to be mean to you. It's not going to happen when you have five clients, but it will happen when you have like a lot of them, you know? So, and this is where we have to own that. Like my, you know, as a business coach, I have, I went through a lot of business failures. That is my accreditation, you know? But okay, to be fair, I was obsessed with business building ever since high school. And then I got my MBA from UT, but MBA doesn't teach you, you know, much of anything when it comes to like building, building a business. But it was like, I did run a health coaching practice ish. I mean, it was online things, sent a bunch of emails. It was like a group coaching thing, whatever. It was in 2012. But, um, and in terms of mindset, it's been literally school of life and being freaking crazy as you are right doing the inner work and um and uh doing doing a lot of stuff this year was really crazy for me i'll share with you um i'll i'll, I'll share this with you this year i did about i want to say 25 uh plant medicine ceremonies which were complete like wake up every single time you know and in between a lot of integration work and a lot of letting go work and what I do in my business that I recommend that everybody does I shut down my business about every six weeks ish sometimes five weeks everybody goes on vacation I go on vacation and I go into a really really hardcore spiritual work and it's like it's, it's like go time. Okay. What is it now? Where am I out of alignment? Show me who I've become that no longer serves me and peeling back and I'm peeling all the layers, all the snake skin that no longer serve so that I can be more aligned, more authentic. And it's, it's not an easy path, but it's, it's one of those. And um, yeah, say so that's <laughs> 25 I mean I've I've done one in my life um mm -hmm. and that was a couple of years ago and um I haven't felt cool I mean but I did it in this country I would love to do it in Costa Rica or Peru mm -hmm. or somewhere like that but um mm -hmm. yeah I haven't felt cool to do it since now I probably will do it again because the experience for me I mean he said don't come with any expectations you know mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. And of course you all do, don't you? Because you've heard your, your mate went through it and he had this amazing experience. And and for me, I was just on my on my ass. I I had some kind of hallucinogenics, but I was literally could not move on the floor like that. Mm -hmm. Yes, very normal. For the whole time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Very, very normal. Yeah. I actually have a couple episodes on my podcast when I like explain what's happening and how does, how does it work and all that fun stuff. Yeah. I'm actually taking a group of clients down to Costa Rica in, in the summer. We're going to do four back to back ceremonies because one is just like, it just gets very confusing because you don't know what to do about it. You don't know what it means. You don't know how to interpret it. Right. So it can be, it can be, it can be kind of unnerving right it's like you're glued to the floor and, and you're like feeling horrible and you're like when is this gonna end you're like white knuckling through the night so yeah but it's 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 the best medicine that I know um you know like okay I, I will explain it this way all the all the stuff that we talked about here uh the letting go work the emotional release the resistance release the unpeeling the layers that's conscious work right yeah. this is this is beyond that, right? This is, this is, um, you know, somebody doing a full scan on you. Okay. Let's look at your ancestral stuff and your past lives and your emotional body, your, your physical body, your, uh, your mental body, and let's see what's going on here. And let's set up a treatment plan. And, and let's put this right in front of you, the biggest blind spot that you need to let go of right now. First, a lot of people can be expectations. They get the different experience and then they have to get the, the energy of it. And then they see some trauma and they're taken. Anyway, 
it's it's just the the it's it's genius it's absolutely genius but um the reason i always do four ceremonies back to back is because it's like you go and it's it's a full week of work when you like go in and you come out on the other side a different human being so yeah it's wow. it's <laughs> it's super crazy but it's like part of you know for me it's been a lot of realigning and a lot of letting go and just beautiful beautiful work yeah because some people are scared of it I mean there's as with everything there's been a couple of horror stories yeah. you know and all the rest of it so yeah um yeah I was never scared um and, and even going through the process I wasn't scared I have, I have oh. many horror stories I could tell you really? you know yeah. people are afraid they're going to lose their mind and I tell them you will and it's okay <laughs> 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 and it's yeah do you have the same shaman every time or do you have different ones or what's that do you have the same shaman that you go to yeah 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 I go to I, I I go to a place called Rhythmia in Costa Rica typically I've been to other places like one of ceremonies it's not the same it's not the same because the the um the the, the intention has a lot of power to it and the intentions that is during the four days is show me who, my, my, who I have become. In other words, show me who I am that does not serve me anymore. Show me my current level of consciousness that I can't see because it's my biggest blind spot. Show me what I need to know about myself, right? And it shows you stuff that you would not guess no matter how much meditation you do. The stuff that you are hiding from yourself. And it's powerful and it's like, nope, we don't want to see it. It's really freaking hard, right? So it's like, you see that. And then the minute you do it, you merge back with your soul. It's like a little bit of a soul retrieval process and you're merging back with your soul. And then every time you do that, you get more and more guidance. You get more and more realignment and then you just start getting superpowers. It's kind of crazy. Like, you know what to say, when to say it, you know, when you're with clients, you start getting downloads, you start getting understanding of how the world works. And I'm like, this is really cool, you know? Yeah. And, and it can be really, uh, you know, it's, it can be very difficult. Actually, it, it is for most people, it's very difficult because you're being taken. Um, it's, it's, you know, ayahuasca is emotional release what it's doing and it's like it does the scan right and it's like okay where's the stored trauma what have we repressed right because you have this packets you know these pockets of like stored trauma in your body and yeah. if you don't release it what does it do it causes disease right and it starts pulling this out it's like let's look at this and let's let it go right it pulls it right in front of you and it's physically extremely uncomfortable. It's emotionally extremely uncomfortable. But all these things that are experiencing, they're coming up to go. So I came to like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited because I'm feeling so horrible. That means this is going. No, I'll never feel this again, right? So that's kind of how I see it. Um, and when you realize it, it just becomes like really kind of like you're at peace. It's like, okay, this is some crazy stuff I'm feeling. Like, what is this nightmare? But I know it's mine. I know it's deep repressed trauma that is coming out and it's coming out to go. And when you do that, you just feel so much lighter. So mm -hmm. I, I, you know, it's, it's one of those things I, I, you know, I don't know if it's for everybody, but I think people who are called to it, but I always tell them, they go to Rhythmia. Like, it's just so much better than any of the other places. I, so. I'm sure I looked at that um, a few a few years ago before I ended up um, just doing the one in the UK. Um, and yeah. that, that does ring a bell. Yeah. Uh, so how do you, um, what sort of clients do you work with now? Is it a case of, you said entrepreneurs is your thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah um, and, and they just given everything you've told me I'm assuming they just show up hi I'll yeah <laughs> <laughs> well typically you know they either talk to me or they come to our retreat and then they're like hey you know like yeah it's hey, they don't, yeah, a lot of them don't just show up you know we invite them like hey come to our retreat <laughs> yeah. you know then you know we uh -huh. yeah they do some work with us and they you know kind of see the work and they're like okay I can see this I, I want to be on this journey and I want to grow my business but more important than that I, I 
I know that I'm here for more than that than just to accumulate and save up for a retirement or whatever it is, right? So yeah, and it was like one of the, quite frankly, it was the one of the big things that I had to realign in my business because there are a lot of people who just wanted the business part. And yeah. I had to say, you know, I'm not willing to do that because I know that, you know, especially for the, for the go-getters, right? Yeah. Cause there's a lot of go-getters who can be very successful. And I said, yeah, I can help you make, you know, a lot of money, but I'm not willing to do that without the mindset piece, because I know you're going to crash and burn and you're going to, you're going to have a few launches. You're going to do a few virtual retreats. It's going to be hundred, 200, 300 K, whatever. And then you're going to be out of business again. You're going to be going through the same cycle. Right. So so that's why I'm like, okay, yeah, you know, I'm happy to give people business advice, but this is so much more important than that. Mm. So, um, and what I mean, do you have? We we haven't spoken about your book, by the way. Um, if you want to mention that, but do you also have any? I don't know how you're working now with with the with the the stuff that you're doing, but do you have right? Okay, ne by next year, I want to now be doing this, or or is it just naturally all evolving? Mm, yeah um hmm somewhere in between I want to say you know I, I I used to be very much like reverse engineer everything down yeah. to down to okay how many retreats how many registrations you know it used to be very very planned and um and and to an extent I think that's still important to have something that you follow because otherwise Otherwise, if you're just kind of like flowing, the resistance gonna, is going to come in, you know? So it's very important. You know, we have our retreats on the calendar, whatever launches we're doing. We know this is the legion. This is the number of calls, blah, 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 the usual business stuff, you know? But then, um, but then, you know, being able to not be attached to it and especially the content that I'm teaching, you know, that's really, really hard because it's constantly evolving, Right. Like this interview, I was like, oh my gosh, I don't want to talk about this. I want to talk about this instead, right? Because I just all got all these downloads and I want to share them. I want to share what we're here for, right? So, so it's kind of like being flexible and allowing things to evolve as they go. And, you know, it's, it's yeah, it's kind of both, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind yeah. of combining the masculine and the feminine, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Well, I'll, I'll ask where people can find you in a minute but what what would you like to sort of if you want to mention your book please mention your book because we haven't talked about that but what also would you um like to leave the listeners with um any sort of pearls of wisdom or downloads or whatever mm. yeah um let me think about that you know I I sense that a lot of people have been struggling this year mm. And there have been a lot of like October, I think was a really, really tough month for a lot of people and, you know, partially November and especially in the world of entrepreneurs, um, it feels like we're making five steps back. And when we're doing that, um, what I want to say is that's a good thing. What's happening is that we're realigning and everything that hasn't served us as we're shifting in the new way of running a business that is more integrous, that is less like in order to kind of thing. You know what I mean? Like I'm going to do this in order to trick a bunch of people to pay me money and then I'm going to feel guilty about it or whatever. You know, we, this is like the time where we, a lot of stuff comes up, you know, be it family stuff, be it just, things coming out of left field and betrayal and breakups and, you know, kids stuff, like all this has been coming. And I would, I just want to give people a sense of hope because I think this is, this is all really, really good. When else, you know, the planet is going through a little bit of a transition, right? And, uh, and when we look at this, like when else in history has been time where we stop for two years, we literally stop and we have to work on ourselves. It's like never happened. Yeah. This is magical. And I have so much hope and I'm so excited about the shifts that we're making. Just this conversation, like we notice we're talking about the same stuff. 
Yeah. You know, it's like, we're realizing, oops, this stuff hasn't worked. Oops. Like we are all lost and it's all good. And what we're doing is waking up as a society and we're moving into a place where there's not going to be all this like threat about security and financial security and all these other things that we're dealing with. Right. And, um, and just the stuff that we have been working through, just allow yourself to sit with anything that comes up. The everything that is going on, the universe, anything, anything that is coming at you, especially in your business, is for you to show you what yet needs to be dealt with, right? Any criticism that you might receive, any launches that don't go your way right? It's all coming up. And as long as you catch the emotion that arises and you pause and you sit and you process and you allow yourself to feel it, then that's all that is required for us. That is literally all that we have to be doing, right? And, you know, it's just, this doesn't take 10 steps. It's just like, okay, this is happening. I'm triggered by it. Let me sit and feel. Let me sit and feel. Let me sit and feel. And, you know, there's three ways we can deal with emotions. We can repress them, we can take them out on other people, or we can sit with them and process them. And when we do that, we go up in frequency, right? And we keep doing that. You're going to get there. You're going to get there. You're going to be a happier person. You're going to come out of this. It's going to be so much better. So just allow this, just know that if it has felt really hard and if it's felt, if it has felt like five steps back, it's actually going forward. It's just that we're clearing some major stacks and yeah, the world is crazy, you know, like it's, it's insane. It's, it's insane. Like, don't even get me started. Right. I just like found out that I might not be able to rent in Costa Rica because whatever rules in, and I'm like, you know, it's, it's all coming up so that I can deal with my stuff, you know, whatever I haven't dealt with yet. So, so it's, it's literally like, I so believe more than ever that the world is actually perfect, all working out for us. So just remind yourself of that and keep doing the work and, and we'll all be good. This podcast is just so well timed. Um, not, <laughs> just not not only in you know the the energy and and the and the whole you know feeling like five steps back and all the rest of it. Good God! Um, and you were talking about October, November for entrepreneurs, and I can totally totally resonate with all of that. But also, as you say, the craziness that's going on. And mm -hmm. it was it was only again part of that same conversation that I had earlier, and. It's so easy to get sucked into what you know the the atrocities and the injustice of it all, um, mm -hmm. and and feeling like you've got to do something about it because if I don't do something about it, then they'll they you know then if no if nobody stood up and said piss off, um, mm -hmm. then they would just get on and 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 rough shot it all through. But but counterintuitively, you can't do that. You've got to, you've got to be in yourself. You've got to know that everything's fine. You know, as long as the happiness is here, um, it doesn't matter what's going on out there. And, you know, two years ago, I didn't give a shit about politics. I didn't give a shit about what was I going know, on. I know, I know. Yeah, I didn't give a shit about what was going on in other countries, really. You know, I, mm -hmm, I'd, take, mm -hmm, I'd take some notice. Um, but I haven't watched the news in years and all of that sort of stuff. And all of a sudden, I find myself, Me too. Find myself in this whole world of, what the fuck you know and, <laughs> I know. and feeling and feeling know, powerless you. you're feeling powerless aren't you in there are days where you just feel like you know I, I, I need to be doing something I've got to be doing something I can't just be sitting there going you know what I mean and because mm -hmm. it feels counterintuitive but of mm -hmm. course it isn't yes I think you know we I think this is part of it like we all signed up to play a role in this right and it's all just like so perfect and beautiful. I will tell you, um, my phone is going to die in about five minutes, by the way. But um, okay. I got to tell you really quickly, you know, I was sitting in a ceremony uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, at Rhythmia. And it was so beautiful because there was somebody from Australia, from Victoria, which is the most um, locked up city. And this person works for the government. Wow. And it was like the most beautiful conversation because he had to get the shot to get out of Australia for this. And there's so much shame that he was carrying. And it's just allowed for this beautiful understanding that we're all in, all in this together. You know, we're all playing a role. Um, and, you know, the people who are writing these restrictions, you know, are 
are here to do their healing work, healing work too, you know? And it's like, oh my, it just gave me this sense of like, oh my gosh, like we're all have this, like we all in this together. We yeah. all just like, are like a lost in like whatever side of it. And I was, I was a little bit lost in it for a little while too. You know, it was like, oh my gosh, this is so not bad. I want to be told not to do A, B, C, X, Y, Z, you know? And and um I actually talked to my mom about this my mom is interesting she lives in the Czech Republic which is and she is like the only person and she would like go into the 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 tube that's what you guys call it yeah <laughs> the tube and she'll be the only person not wearing a mask and she's like zen about it and I'm like how and then it's just like oh my gosh it's just that this is like a brave woman but she's all peace about it if somebody asks okay I'll put it you know it's just like she's just like so um you know zen about it and people are like what you know people are like what and she's just like so peaceful about it and everybody has so much respect for her and then I'm like okay you know yeah <laughs> uh-huh. really, I like your yeah. mom I like your mom yeah yeah um okay well before your phone dies um if people want to get in touch with you how can they find you yeah I'm at two things. I have a podcast. It's currently called Leaders Break Free. I tend to rebrand it. So you might want to search by my name, but I'm going to send you a link or uh, to put in, a, uh, put in a show notes. But if you're listening to this before January 10th, we have a retreat coming up. The free retreat I want anybody to be part of. It's going to be inner journey. Like everything we talked about today, we're actually going to do and do your work. We're going to do some emotional release. We're going to go there, resolve the resistance. We might do some breath work, which is very exciting. Uh, you know, do some altered state stuff. We're going to realign with our souls. We're going to talk about the layers and do some of the deep stuff that has to be done. It's going to be um, basically a seven day inner journey. That's what we're going to be doing. Not a lot of note taking. No more tactics, no more spaghetti to throw on the wall. We're going to go in and, and have some have some really vulnerable conversations and do the inner work together. So um, the way to register is um, leadersbreakfree.com forward slash retreat. I think that's the URL. Leadersbreakfree.com forward slash retreat. Did you and say then, that's a free retreat? Yeah. I'm going to register. Awesome. <laughs> I'd love to have you. It's going to be lots of fun. And yeah, we're going to do breakout rooms and lots of sharing. And, and um, there's going to be lots of people who are very much in the same conversation. You know, it's just like, let's do this work together. Let's, let's, that, let's set ourselves up for an amazing 2022. It's not going to be easy either. You know, because <laughs> we still have a lot of work to do to to rise up, but um, it's it's the freedom work, which I think there's that's the most important thing. So I'm super excited. Wow. Okay. Um. Perfect. Well, I'll, obviously, I'll put that in the show notes anyway. So, um, if anybody wants to register, that's wonderful. Eva, thank you so much. Um, it really has been an absolute joy to meet you. And um, oh my gosh, it's been so amazing to meet you. I have to have you come come on my podcast because I feel like you and I could literally talk for hours <laughs> you know? I would love that I would absolutely love that so yeah send me the link and I'll book myself in I'd love to do that awesome <laughs> well enjoy the rest of your day I don't know where your little daughter is is she around or she's napping oh, yeah good. <laughs> good timing yeah Okay, well, thank you so much. Um, I know the uh, the listeners are going to have loved this. Uh, I've loved it. And um, yeah, it's been a real pleasure to meet you. And uh, I look forward to the retreat as well. Yes, thank you so much. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you. Thank you.